He's a waymaker! Hey, how many of you, like myself, have seen him make a way where there seemed to be no way? Jesus, we love you. Thank you that you're a way maker. Thank you that you'll put a stream in the desert. God, thank you that you can move mountains that we cannot move. God, thank you that you can pay bills that we cannot pay. God, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Woo! Man, guys, thank you so much. Let's give our worship team a hand. Awesome. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. I mean, I'm telling you, if you could travel with me, you'd realize how blessed we are. I mean, just awesome. And what a great crowd today. You can tell it's NFL season. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. So glad that you are here today. First time guests, I'll be out in the lobby, uh, out by the, the round black tables. I would love to meet you and uh, shake your hand. Or if you've been coming and I've never had a chance to meet you personally, um, I would love to do that as well. You know, we live in a day that, that is consumed with self-promotion. I call it the self-promotion commotion. We are in a selfie-crazed world. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look, look at me, look at what I've done, look at how I look. Look at how I drive. Look at what I eat for cereal. Look at how I tie my shoes, look, look. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at us, look at us, look at us. Look at me as a mom, look at me as a dad, look at me as a grandparent. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at my fitness. Look, we're family fit. Look at us, look, 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 look at us. Look at, look at what I've accomplished. Look, look at what I have. Look at where we live. And we, you might know what I'm talking about. And selfies aren't wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, here's the problem. You and I have believed a lie. We believed, we took it like a largemouth bass on a Texas rig. I mean, boom. Here's the lie. If I don't let them know, I will never be known. If I don't let them know what kind of mom I am, nobody will ever know. If I don't let them know what I'm doing, they'll never know. If I don't push myself into the next room that I want to be in, then I might be forgotten and left behind. If I don't promote myself, I might miss opportunities that I will regret. I might get passed by. And that fear, man, that fear that I don't want the bus to leave the station without me. I don't want to be passed by and forgotten. I don't want somebody to be promoted beyond me. I don't, I, don't, I don't want somebody to think I'm not affectionate. I don't want somebody to think that I'm not working hard. I don't want somebody to think that I'm not really trying my best. I don't want somebody to think I'm a failure. I, don't want, I want people to know, especially people that I'm kind of angry at, I want them to know. Look at me. Look at us. Look at what I've accomplished. We're going to go to a story in 1 Samuel 16. If you have a Bible, probably three or four of you bring a Bible, maybe at the most. It's okay. We have a big Bible on the screen for you. That's why we do it. Or if you're like me, it's just easier to read it on the screen because I can't read small print like I used to. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Come on now. Help me out. Here's the context of, the, of where we're going. The nation of Israel is in the Old Testament. Now, whenever you, it's a little Bible study nugget. When you see the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, it's a, and in the New Testament as well, it's a prophetic picture of us as followers of Jesus Christ, as his disciples. 
It's a prophetic picture. So we see similarities. Not everything that was for them is for us, but we, we see a picture in the scripture that, that's, like I said, what you, see in the New, what you see in the New Testament is what we can apply from the Old Testament. So these, the nation of Israel had never had an earthly king because God was their king. But all the nations around them had kings. And just like you want to be like everybody else, they want to be like everybody else. And they kept begging God to make an exception and let them have an earthly king. And so God, in his graciousness, let them. And he gave Samuel, the high priest, he was the spiritual leader, like the pastor, if you will, of the nation of Israel. He, he anointed a guy named Saul. Saul was like the head and shoulders and height above. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. Israel had 12 tribes. The tribe of Benjamin the Benjamites were ambidextrous. They could, they could throw a spear with their right, like their left, and shoot a bow and all this. They were just ambidextrous, incredible warriors. Saul was one of them. He was a hero. He became the first king. Saul had deep character flaws and issues, and God told him that his sons would not become king. That God would move the king, the, the kingdom, out from his family. So now God is going to move Samuel now to find the next king. So he says, Samuel, I want you to stop grieving over Saul. It's time to get over that. I want you to get a, a flask of olive oil, which is always a picture of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God. And I want you to take a, a cow, a heifer, to sacrifice. And I want you to go to Bethlehem. Does that sound familiar, Bethlehem? Okay. I want you to go to Bethlehem to the house of a guy named Jesse. And I want you to ask him to bring all of his sons out from the, and stand them from the oldest to the youngest, and I will show you which one will be the next king. So here we go. First Samuel 16, verse 6. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab, he was the oldest, and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. Probably because he looked really, looked apart. But the Lord said to Samuel, now, don't, now lean in here, watch what he says. Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Verse 8. Then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, this is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shemiah. But Samuel said, neither is this the one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Verse 11. Then Samuel asked, are these the sons, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied. But he's out in the field, say in the fields, watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah. So think about this story. Samuel goes, they line up the sons, they go through all seven, none of them were the ones. God says, you're looking at the outward appearance. But I'm looking at the heart. Is this all you got, Jesse? No, I got one. He's out in the way out, way down there in the back 40, you know. And he's keeping the sheep and the goats. So David gets promoted to be the next king of Israel. David, who was forgotten by his own dad. David, number two, who was not the cultural choice. So in that culture, it was a patriarchal, a fatherly culture. So everything went from the uh, father to the oldest son. 
to the next oldest, to the next oldest. So David is the baby. He's the caboose, all right? He, he, there's no way from an earthly picture he can ever be promoted. It would have to go through seven brothers before him. There is no way. He's forgotten by his dad. Culturally, he has no shot. Number three, he's not even in the right place. He's not even at the event to meet the people. He's not even at the conference. He's not even at the party. He's not even in the right place. He's a long way from where it's going on. He's a long way from where it's happening. He's a long way from where anybody even remembers who he is. He's out keeping sheep and goats. He's not even in the right place. From the outside, it looked like everybody had forgotten David. But God had. See, what David did, let me tell you what David did in that field. You see, David maximized this season of his life. So he had a lot of alone time out there. So we know, because we have so much recorded history of this, that David spent that time growing in his relationship with God. The book of Psalms, you know, like Psalm 23 and the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. All the, psalm, all the psalm, most of the psalms, not all of them, but most of them are worship songs. They are prayers written by David in the season that he was alone, forgotten by his dad, not the cultural choice, and not even in the right place. He grew in that relationship. We also know that David did a great job keeping the sheep. We have no record of David ever complaining about keeping the sheep. We have no record of David trying to get back in the house and get out of the field. We have no record of David ever being jealous of his brothers. None. We do have record of him taking great care of his father's sheep so much that he risked his own life to protect them against a lion and a bear that he kills with his bare hands and a slingshot. I mean, what's one lamb when you got hundreds, but the one lamb mattered because his daddy owned the lamb? So he risked his own life for one lamb. Why would you risk your life for a one lamb when a bear's got it when you got hundreds and hundreds of sheep? Why? Because he was a man that had integrity at the task. And when it was time, God promoted. So here's the title of what I want to talk about for the next few minutes. When it's time. Say that with me. Say it again. Say it again. When it's time. He will promote you when you're not trying to promote yourself. And when it's time, say when it's time, he will promote you with his power. You can push yourself into the next room on your own, but you're on your own. See, Here's the tough thing. We feel like we're on a race against the clock. God doesn't have a clock. I'm talking to a young lady in this room. I don't know who you are, but God knows your name. Your biological clock is ticking. And you want to have a baby, and you want to get married first, and that's, that's the right thing to do. And I want to get married, and I want to, I want to have children. And the clock is ticking, and there's no man in sight. So you're posting stuff on social media that's provocative, hoping that a man will look at you and will want you. 
and you're trying to push yourself into the next room. Here's what you need to know. When he wants you to have the man, when it's time, he will come. If he wants you to have a baby when it's time, they will come. I'm talking to somebody here that you feel stuck in your career. Your pay hasn't changed for 12 years, but inflation has. Your kids have gotten older. How many of you parents agree that when they get older, they cost more? Come on, somebody. I got three in college. Help a brother out. And you, your pay hasn't changed for 12 years. So you're thinking, I'm 43. In 10 years, I'm 53. In 20 years, I'm 63. In 30 years, I'm 70. If I can only save this amount for this year and 10 years or 20, you're running numbers in your head. And you're you might know what I'm talking about. You see, maybe, maybe I need to cut a corner here. Maybe I need to cut a deal here. Maybe I need to, to I know, I know it's kind of shady, but I got to pay the rent. And so I'm going to, you with me? Here's what you need to know. When it's time, the promotion will come. Don't force the game. Let the game come to you. Rolls Royces don't advertise. Toyotas do. I drive a Toyota. <laughs> Kias do. Hyundais do. You ever seen a commercial for Rolls Royce? They don't have to. The product sells itself. Somebody help a brother out. Now listen. Now listen. To use sports analogy, we're, you know, we're celebrating all of our A-team volunteers today, so we're wearing our favorite team shirts. Okay, so let me give you a sports analogy. If you're good enough, they'll find you. The best players always play. Listen, when it's time, they come. When it's time. See, I know what you're thinking because I think it too. I, I have to make sure I'm ahead. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with ambition. Ambition's good. And I'm not anything wrong with making decisions. Making decisions is good. It's when you cross a line that God has set. To get something you think you need. That is where self-promotion begins. That's where the selfie crosses the line. That's where constantly bragging about myself when I'm with people. Constantly one-upping other people in conversations. Constantly bragging on my kids. And how great my kids are. Let me tell you something. People can only take that in small doses. Some of you are young parents. Listen to a brother. Let me help you. <laughs> Kaiser may be the coolest kid in the world to you, but he ain't to everybody else. I love you. I'm a daddy. Constantly bragging on what your kids do. Constantly bragging. I'm not saying don't brag on them. I'm saying... You know what I'm saying? You want people to hate your kids? Brag on them. All the time. That goes for grandparents as well, though you get a little bit of grace. People think grandparents have checked out most of the time anyway, so they, they give them grace. But, 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 because my parents did. When, my, when, my, when Landon was born, my dad lost his mind. 
I mean, my dad, my dad was like, anything goes. I remember he was in K-5 and getting in trouble at school, and dad said, he's not the problem. The teacher's the problem. <laughs> it was a true story. Dad came and said, listen, you can't get on to him anymore. He said, he's too smart for them. He's too smart for the teacher. She can't handle him because he's too smart. This is the same dad that told me. See, when I went to school, you got spanked at school. Back in the day. And dad said to me, you get one there. Anybody know where I'm going? You get one here. You get licks there. You got to get licked here. Are you with me? Anybody know what I'm talking about? My parents didn't believe in timeout. They believe in knockout. You might know what I'm talking about. Come on now. Help a brother out. How many think we ought to go back to the good old days? Come on now. Yeah, here, I'm here. Now, that's the same dad. That's the same dad that sat down with me and he said, authority has the right to be wrong. Authority has the right to be wrong because they're authority. Submit to authority. Same dad. He's too smart for the teacher. Lost his mind. David, David. wasn't looking for another job. David wasn't promoting himself. David wasn't on a selfie campaign. David made the most of the moment, and when it was time, God promoted him. So, and by the way, he's brought out in front of his brothers, and he's anointed. You know what he had to do after he got anointed king? Go back out and keep the sheep. How many of you could handle that? You've already been chosen by God to be the man. And after Samuel leaves, everybody says goodbye, and you go dry the oil out of your hair, he says, uh, sheep don't keep themselves, boy. Back out there. How many of you would say, bah, 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 bah. Ooh. I'm the man. Oh, man. I'm the no, no, no. Go back out to the field. See, what happened was, is God could trust David with more because God, because David made the most of the moments that he was in. So how do you and I do that? I'm going to give you four things real quick and then we're going to pray. Number one, see this season as the best season. See the house you live in now as the best house you live in. Don't be watching HGTV to find something bigger. This is the best season. The street we live on is the best street. The house we live in is the best house. The age my kids are now are the best years. The problems I have to now are the best problems I have. This is the best this is the best season. This is the best job. This is the best city to live in. This is the best weather to live in. This is the best season of my life. This is the best. You know why it's the best? Because it's the only one that you're in. You know why it's the best? It's the only one your feet are in. You know why it's the best? It's the only one you're breathing in. You're not breathing in five years ago. Man, I remember back when I was making more money. So what? You don't remember everything about back then. You have selective memory. So do I. You only remember what you want to remember. It wasn't all, it wasn't all sweet and rosy back then either. I bet if we went back then, you complained about that job. I bet if we went back then, there were days like, man, I wish I didn't have all this pressure. I bet if we go back then, like David said, like God said to Samuel, quit mourning over Saul. Get up. 
Go forward. There's a new thing I'm going to do. This is the best season. I got three toddlers, and I hadn't slept more than three hours in three years. But this is the best season. I got a high schooler and two middle schoolers. They're totally humiliated to be in public with me. They tell me all the time that I'm not up to speed and I don't know what's going on. But this is the best season. Our kids are grown and the house is empty. Hallelujah. And this is the best season. This is the best. Number two, because it's the best, I'm going to make the most of the time that I've been given. I'm going to use this time to grow in my relationship with God. I'm going to pick up journaling and writing things down in this season. Number two, this is the only job I will ever have. You're working at Marco's Pizza with a college degree because you can't get in with your career field right now. And you're like, man, I can't wait till I can use my degree. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me help you. That's not the attitude. The attitude is I'm going to be the best employee Marco's Pizza's ever had. I'm going to make sure pizzas are, if, if it's my responsibility, I'm going to make sure they're there on time. I'm going to make sure the tables are served well. I'm going to make sure the pizza's around. I'm not going to be like, well, I'm just going to help we do this pizza so I can get a job in accounting. Oh, no, 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 because God's keeping record. You're in the sheep field and God's watching. If God can't trust you with pizza, he can't trust you with people. I'm going to be the best pizza delivery boy, the best pizza delivery girl Marco's Pizza's ever had. I'm going to be there early. I'm going to stay late. I'm going to give more than what I've been paid to do. I'm going to do the best I can. And I'm going to make my manager look good. And I'm going to make the owner look good. And I'm going to give my best. It's the only job I'll ever have. The only job. So Brad, I don't want this to be the only job I have. I get it. I get it. Do right at Marco's and God will take care of the rest. Man, Brad, I'm at the same company. I've been passed over and passed over and passed over. Okay. Think about David. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get fresh vision for where I am right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to coach myself up that I'm driving to work to this job like it's my first day on this job. Because there was a day you were excited about that job. And if there was a day you were excited, you can get excited again. And I'm going to get excited again. This is the only job I will ever have. Number three. Don't look back at the house. David wasn't watching sheep saying, man, I keep these sheep better than anybody does. I wish I was back up there. I guess I'll never do anything more than keep the sheep, I guess. I guess, you know. Just you and me, God. I guess I'll, I guess I'll never look at the house up there. They're all eating. I'm out here having a sandwich by myself. They're all getting to go on vacation together. I'm out here watching sheep. See, if you look back at the house, you'll misuse the sheep. If you look back at the house, you put the sheep in peril. 
See, if David was looking at the house when the lion attacked the sheep, he wouldn't have been able to protect the sheep. If David had been looking back at the house when the bear attacked the sheep, he wouldn't have been able to protect the sheep. Are you guys with me on this? Now watch this, guys. I'm talking to some young parents in here. Listen to me. I want to be out of this season that my kids are in. And I'm looking into tomorrow. And I'm looking at what other people have and what other people can do. And I start thinking I deserve something that I don't have. And I'm entitled to something that others have. And I don't protect my kids like I should. I miss taking my daughter on a date because I'm consumed with what I don't have. I miss sitting in bleachers and cheering for my kids because I'm consumed with what I don't have and what I think I deserve what I feel like I've been robbed of or passed over for. Are you with me, guys? I can't enjoy moments with my spouse because I'm so busy looking at the house. And if you're looking at the house, you're not caring for what you got. And if you're looking at the house and not caring for what you got, peril comes to what you've been given. Last thing. Is this helping anybody today? Last thing. I got to trust what he sees more than what I see. It all comes down to this, really. I got to trust that he knows. And I got to trust not only that he knows, but that he knows my name. He knows where I live. That he knows what I can handle. See, see, he didn't let David know until he knew he could trust David with the knowledge. And we know David could be trusted because David went back out to the field with a good attitude. It was many, many years before David ever went to the throne. See, God knows what you can handle. Look, look at me. You may not be ready for a man. It may kill you and you may kill him. I'm serious. You may not be ready for that promotion. Look, that promotion may not be good for you. It may be a job you're not gifted to do, and it's going to kill your health and kill your family. You were made to carry a half ton, and you're trying to carry two tons, and God didn't make you to carry two tons. He made somebody else to carry two tons, but not you. I got to trust what he sees. This was a painful, painful lesson in my journey. Because I'm a, I'm a type A. I am a take the bull by the horns, kick the door down. Let's go. If you're not with me, see ya. Body's left in the wake. Let's go. That's me. I don't, I don't do well when one plus one equals three. It doesn't equal two. I don't do well in that. I do well. And I've wrestled my whole adult life with the fear of being forgotten. And a number of years ago, um, it was really affecting me. I was not happy with where we were as a church. I felt like we should have been farther along. I felt like we should have had this or that. I felt like this. I saw other people, other churches, you know, and 
just was eating on me. And, and, and when you're like that, it's impossible not to become critical. When you're like that, it's impossible not to become arrogant. When you're like that, it's impossible not to become jealous. It's impossible. It's going to happen. And I remember a wonderful, wonderful, victorious day in my life. When I wrote this in my journal, he knows my name. He knows my address. He knows my bandwidth. What I can handle and what I can't. And he's given me everything in my life today that he wants me to care for. Here's a question the Holy Spirit asked me. If Life Point Church that you've given your life to if it's never larger than it is today, can you still smile? Can you still worship me? Can you still love these people and give your life to them? Serve them. Can you still be positive? Can you still believe this is the only church I will ever pastor? Second question. If one day it's smaller than what it is today, can you still love me? Can you still worship me? Can you still serve these people with your life. I'll tell you, I've still made a lot of mistakes, but that was a game-changing time and season in my life. It's a wonderful thing when you don't have to win. Did you hear what I said? It's a wonderful thing when you don't have to win. Because if you have to win, if you have to be on top, if you have to come out smelling like roses, if your name has to always be protected, if you have to always be celebrated, if it's you, that's where Satan's got you. Because see, sometimes the promotion is it to become king? Sometimes the promotion is in the field you're in. See, you may never make more money than you make today, but you could become wealthier on the inside, not the outside. You may never drive a better car, but you're a better person driving the car. You may never, ever get out of that situation. But you'll become victorious in the situation. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. I got I to gotta land the plane, get you guys out of here. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's just pray right now, just privately in your heart. Just start thanking Jesus for what he's given you. Just thank him, man. Thank him for what he's given you. Thank him for the car you have, the home you have the person you're married to. Thank Him for your kids. Call them out by name. Thank Him for this season of life that you're in, the classes that you're taking, the professors that you have. Thank Him for the challenges you're facing in your life. Thank Him for this moment, for the job that you have. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm sorry for where I've been looking back at the house. I'm sorry for where 
I've been really promoting myself. I'm sorry for where I've crossed some lines. I'm sorry. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. And I choose to trust you today. I choose to trust that you know what I need. I choose to trust that you know where I live. I choose to trust you know how tired I am. I choose to trust that you're keeping the record, not me. And I choose to trust that when it's time, you'll bring the answer. Help us to live like David. God, help us to care for the sheep that you've given. God, help us to go to work tonight and tomorrow at our jobs with fresh excitement and fresh vision. May, may, may everyone in this room that's a follower of Jesus, may their testimony at work be so good because they give it their best. We trust you, Jesus. We will not be a people that have to have our way. We will not be a people that it has to be what I want all the time. We will be stronger than that. We will be bigger than that. We will have more character than that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's all stand together. I'm going to dismiss you in about 10 seconds. The altar is open. If you want to begin a relationship with Jesus Christ today, I'll invite you to come. If you need prayer for anything, I invite you to come. We're here. I want to encourage you guys and girls, sign up for Design and Built. Design begins. That's our small groups for girls on Tuesday night at 7. Built is for guys. Be here. If you want to know better how to make this the best season, how to make sure it's the only job you ever have, how to not look back at the house and to trust his sight, you do it better with people in your life. All right? God bless you. I love you. See you next week.